rundown uh, of the agenda. Uh, the agenda. Uh, we're going to do some introductions. We have a promo video. Uh, we're going to go over what each job is kind of like. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about staff recs, um, about where you'll be living for the summer, uh, contract start dates, and all the fun stuff. Uh, and then we'll also have some alumni uh, talk about uh, how HSR has helped them. And then at the very, very end, uh, we'll have a QA. and a um, If you do have questions throughout, feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, T and I will be doing our best to answer the questions for you guys. Um, but just be patient with us as we all speak presenting. All right. Um, so my name's Chris. I'm the camp director uh, for Halliburton Scout Reserve. Um, and I've been working at Halliburton for, I'm not even going to count the years, but since 2013. Uh, and this will be my second year as the camp director. Uh, my name is Tia, and I'm the assistant camp director. And I've also been working at HSR since 2013. Lucas, I think your mic is muted. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my name is Lucas. I'm the program coordinator. Uh, I've been working at camp since 2016, and I am essentially the head of all of the uh, program staff. Hi, I'm Andrea. I've been working at camp since 2014, and I run the kitchen. Uh, my name is Ryan. I work in the store. This will be my fifth summer. I'm Isaac. I was head ropes last summer, and this will be my fifth year at HSR. Um, I'm Isabel, and I'm a ropes instructor. My name's Nathan, and I worked there in 2019 as an IT and an archery instructor in 2023. My name is Ainsley. I worked there in 2018 as a staff in training and 2019 as a waterfront instructor. Hi, I'm Zaria. I worked as a staff in training in 2014 and maintenance until 2017. And I don't work there anymore. All right. Uh, so we do have just like a bit of a promotional video. Uh, you might need to click play yourself. Some people have said that the video doesn't work for them. Um, hopefully it works. Uh, if not, you can watch it. We'll post the YouTube link uh, for you guys to watch it later as well. And we'll be sharing the slides. Right, so hopefully that worked for everybody. Uh, if not, we're just going to continue on and you can watch it on your own time. Tia. Yeah. All right. Um, so while we're discussing the different um, job positions we have available, we'll be referencing different areas in the camp. Um, so this is just a map showing where those are on our property. If you haven't been there before or you just need a refresher. Um, so we'll start at main ends. That's where you're coming in at the parking lot. Uh, if you've camped with us, that's where you load onto the barges. So that's at that area. The next area is where uh, most of our program areas and more, uh, most of our uh, work areas are. So that's the hub. Um, that's where the stores are in this area. And most program areas are also around here. And then across the lake, uh, we have Snorkel Island and Trapper's Cabin, um, which uh, we'll be talking about, about the different program uh, positions we have available.
Hey, Isabel, it starts with you. Sorry. Um, so, like I said, I'm Isabel, I'm a ropes instructor, um, and there are three different parts of are three different areas that you can work as a ropes instructor. There is rappelling, which is on the cliff. There is the climbing wall, and there is the low ropes. Um, for each of these three activities, you are responsible for setting up um, before your groups get there, as well as leading the safety instructions and the program lesson. Um, and each of those just make sure that the campers may, um, know how to engage in the activity in a safe and fun way. Um, and now I'm just going to talk a bit about each of those areas. So a day in the life at rappelling, you're going to walk to the cliff just after breakfast. Usually um, at rappelling, you will leave a little bit earlier than the climb wall or low ropes instructors, just because it does take a little bit longer to get there. It is a little bit further away and it takes just a little bit longer to set up. Um, once you get there, you set up your course. There's two courses on the cliff that campers can um, use to repel. Um, and yeah, our program runs from nine to 12 in the morning. So there is a one and a half hour slot each. You're not always going to have um, a full morning. So it kind of just depends. Um, but typically you're going to go for nine for the first slot and then you'll be there until lunchtime and then you'll return afterwards. Um, Repelling is really fun because you are giving campers an opportunity to do something that they otherwise wouldn't do at a lot of other Scouts Canada camps. It's repel down a 60 foot cliff. Um, it can be kind of daunting. So part of your job as a repelling instructor is to just make sure that um, these kids are feeling safe and supported as well as um, you're answering any questions that they might have about this. You're just ensuring that they are stable in our ropes and our harnesses um, and just talking to them and making sure that they're having a good time and enjoying their experience. Um, next at climbing wall, um, we have a climbing wall just before you hit the archery range. Uh, there are three courses there. Um, and we do change the, um, the routes to ensure maximum enjoyment for all of our campers. Um, that is part of your job as the repelling instructor. You will be making sure that the routes are set um, as well as just leading campers in how to do the activity, making sure that they know how to climb properly and are feeling supported um, so that they can enjoy everything that we have to offer. Um, and then next up, we've got low ropes. Low ropes is very team building um, centered. Um, a lot of times we'll have a little story just saying like that the late, the ground is lava is a good one, or we're making up a story about getting away from the Kanabi Lake monster. Basically, you're just coming up with a whole bunch of stuff to um, engage the campers um, to get through the course. Um, it's a lot of fun. We've got tire swings, um, oh, uh, suspension lines, um, a lot of really fun things that the campers get to enjoy. Um, yeah. Perfect, thank you as well. Um, Ainsley, Sharon on the waterfront. Awesome, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it's like to be a waterfront instructor at HSR. So as a waterfront instructor, you get to work with a really amazing team of lifeguards. Um, with that, you'll also be working with the waterfront coordinator who is responsible for kind of organizing all of the waterfront specific activities. And then Lucas, our amazing program coordinator to kind of oversee the program as a whole. Um, and so with that, um, there's a whole bunch of really, really cool uh, programs that we offer here that as a waterfront staff, you'd be in charge of running. So that includes kayaking, sailing, stand up paddle boards, snorkeling, advanced kayaking and advanced canoeing. Um, so as a part of running those activities, you'll start off with like a brief safety lesson, introduce people to the topic, because sometimes we have people coming in who maybe have never sailed before. And it's really important to make sure that they're safe and they have fun. Um, these lessons will typically last an hour to three hours, depending on the program. 
So sailing lessons tend to be a little bit longer. Aside from like the specific waterfront programs, you also have responsibilities related to being a lifeguard and making sure people are safe. Um, so one of the big events we'll talk about later is the regatta. Um, you're responsible for uh, running the crash boat during water activities to make sure everyone's safe. You also might be lifeguarding actively during that time when there's people swimming. Uh, on our HDOC, we also have people who are interested in just having a free swim. So sometimes you'll be asked to step in and help with that as well. And then a really cool thing that we get to do every Sunday is teaching canoe lessons. So when people first come visit us, they'll be given canoes and you'll be responsible for teaching them specific safety related to the canoes, paddle strokes, uh, canoe rescue, that type of thing. Uh, and then aside from your duties sort of running events or being a lifeguard, um, you have the role of a little bit of a mentor. Um, so you'll have staff in training working with you throughout the summer. And so it's your responsibility to help them grow and develop their leadership skills and learn a little bit about waterfront uh, and also making sure that all of the equipment and program area is generally safe and clean. So our Airsoft range um, is possibly one of one of the uh, favorite activities for campus. So if you decide to work at the uh, Airsoft range, then uh, you get uh, to see a lot of happy faces. Um, however, you do need to be 18 or older to work there. Um, by being on the airsoft range, uh, your job would entail giving uh, these very important safety lessons to the uh, campers for the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so of the lesson, and then supervising them while they're shooting on the deck uh, while they are um, uh, go up in rounds to a, uh, our targets. Uh, you can actually take a look at the top left picture on this slide. Um, the two in green shirts, those would be uh, your job at the Aerosoft range. Um, and as you can see, you're essentially watching. Uh, you're there for safety. You're there to make sure all the campers uh, are safe while they're having fun on the range and that everything uh, runs smoothly there. Uh, the, the Aerosoft range... Uh, runs in hour long time slots. Uh, so there should be up to three of them in the morning, up to three of them uh, in the afternoon. And working on the range would also entail a, uh, uh, the uh, taking care of our uh, airsoft equipment while uh, we're not running lessons. So uh, that would mean, a, um, uh, well, we are getting new airsoft rifles uh, this year. So I don't 100% know what the uh, specific uh, maintenance that these guns will have are, but usually it involves cleaning them or uh, storing them, or um, I imagine with these new airsoft guns, probably changing the uh, air compressors so that they uh, uh, remain uh, usable for the uh, campers. Uh, but otherwise, working on the uh, range is um, a fun experience. Awesome, thank you, Lucas. Uh, and Nathan's gonna share about uh, being an archery instructor. Unless he's muted. Is it working? There you go. <laughs> Is it working? Yep. We're good? Okay, so yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yeah, so a day in the life of an archery instructor, make sure you show up with plenty of time you need uh, in the morning to get everything ready and instruct, inspect the equipment, make sure nothing is damaged or broken, and then set everything up for the campers, uncover the targets, that kind of thing, wait for them to come in, greet them, make sure they're having a good day, uh, deliver the safety lesson, and then have them step up onto the platform, shoot their arrows, and retrieve them, that kind of thing. And then once they have all left and have been satisfied, you can then look at the equipment, make sure it is not damaged or broken again. Just make sure to inspect it so that way everybody stays safe. And yeah, it's pretty much what you do. Just make sure everybody stays safe on the range and nobody gets hurt. Awesome, thanks, uh, Nathan. Um, okay, and then Lucas and Chris will share about trappers and survival. Yes, um, may I go first? Go for it. All right. 
Uh, so Trapper's Cabin, um, well, Trapper's Cabin and Survival Island are two different solo programs that you could run uh, here at camp. They're really great because in most of these programs, such as repelling or um, uh, ropes or rifle, the uh, campers are really excited about the activity. They get to be doing something there. It, it's hands-on. It's active. But here at Trappers and Survival, um, the kids get to be uh, looking at you and be interested in you as a staff member and what you have to share with them. Working at these programs is like giving about an hour long storytelling, informative uh, history survival lesson um, about these uh, uh, specific topics. And if you are a good presenter, a good speaker, you uh, can make them laugh, you can make it your own thing, then this, uh, the campers would uh, really like you and really look up to you in these programs. Um, Trapper's Cabin specifically is this cabin we have on the other side of the lake where it's uh, got some old hunting equipment, some old traps, uh, some logging equipment, uh, these animal bones, animal skulls, animal pelts that you can pass around, and a whole lot of information you can talk about uh, uh, what uh, trapping and logging was like back in the day, as well as all this information you can tell about the animals. Survival, on the other hand, is this island in the middle of the lake uh, where um, uh, it, it's this island in the middle of the lake where you teach kids about a, uh, survival skills. You teach them about food, water, shelter. The island also has many uh, survival shelters, many different types of survival shelters, all built across the island that you can show the campus as well and play some fun games where you see how many campers can fit inside uh, a lean-to. Um, but in general, uh, both these programs can be very, very rewarding for you if um, speaking is your passion, if telling stories is your passion. You can also, there's no specific script you have to follow for these programs. You essentially have the freedom to make that hour long uh, lesson your own and add in your own jokes, add in your own stories, add in your own uh, knowledge into these uh, lessons to create an experience for these campers. Uh, Chris, was there anything you wanted to add? No, oh, I think you pretty much covered right. everything. Uh, so I'm going to talk quickly about OutTripper. Uh, so the OutTripper is a new role that we're adding this year. Um, basically, you'll just be um, helping groups uh, on a guided hike. And so uh, it can kind of differ from what the group might want. Um, but the goal is to help scouters and scouts feel more connected to the trip path, um, set up some goals before you head out on the trip. Um, while you're on the trip, kind of connect with nature and uh, use techniques to kind of absorb uh, what's going on around you uh, without just kind of walking through it. Um, yep. So the, uh, the instructor might be doing day hikes, uh, afternoon hikes, or even uh, overnight hikes. Uh, kind of just depends on what the group uh, groups camping there are looking for that week. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then Isaac and Nathan are gonna share what a typical week as program staff looks like. All right, I'll start with the first half of the week. So for Saturday, all program staff will be, for the most part, involved in barge driving. Uh, for the morning of Saturday, you will be involved in barge driving the groups out. That means getting up nice and early and getting the kids who are from the previous week off the property as soon as possible, making sure that no one leaves stuff behind, uh, making sure that everything gets done as safely and quickly as possible, and that everyone had a great week at HSR. It's a fun time to, you know, reminisce with the kids for about the week and just in general get stuff done. And then we have lunch and then we'll have barge driving the new groups in. That means getting all of the equipment off of their trucks, off of their vehicles, and into our barges, and then driving them out to whatever new site they're going to for that week. It's a hectic time. There's a lot of groups that are going a lot of different places. It requires a lot of uh, communication between the barge groups, a lot of good driving skills, 
obviously uh, at the start, we will mostly have previous staff doing the actual driving with the new staff learning as we go. But of course, as the weeks go on, more and more of our new staff will be barge driving, and it's about getting those kids out as fast as possible. Then on Sunday, for most of program, that will be your day off. However, for waterfront, as we said earlier, that is canoe lessons. That means you're teaching the kids how to canoe. For waterfront, you will be having your day off some other day during the week. We also then have Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, which are fairly simple. They are just your program lessons as we've gone over. You're basically just uh, doing the things that you would be doing. So, of course, ropes is doing whatever. Uh, you're doing the rappelling cliff, you're doing the wall, or waterfronts doing waterfront stuff. Of course, there are evening duties through these days. There's POC or program center duty where you stay for about an hour cleaning the program center, making sure that any phone calls get answered. And there's also star hike where you go out in the night uh, on a barge and do star stories for about an hour. They depends on your week, what you will be doing, but for the most part, you'll be doing each of those about once a week. And then for the last two days, I will let Nathan explain regatta and uh, campfire and shoot offs. Ah, oh, thanks. But yeah, so Thursdays are Thursday mornings are pretty much like every other day. You know, you'd wake up, go have your breakfast, go do your program. But then on Thursday afternoons, we have this really fun thing called regatta, which is a bunch of waterfront activities like canoeing, a bunch of different um, different categories in the canoeing section. And then we have some kayaking programs as well that we get to have fun with. And then our big war canoes as well. A lot of swimming activities going on in regatta, you know, different um, rope tying events, that kind of thing. And then for Friday, we would typically have just another regular morning and then a regular afternoon, except for if you run the archery range like I did, you would go and take the groups on an archery shoot off, which we, you would be hyping up all week long, getting groups pumped, ready to go for the shoot offs going on. And then also the same thing goes for the rifle or the airsoft range. We would have that going on as well. They would have their own shoot off and it uh, kind of varies depending on the person of how they want to run that so but yeah that's what's going on on our thursday friday awesome thanks guys so up next we have ryan talking about the store okay um so i'm just gonna go over a quick overview of what a week in the store looks like um so at camp there's three different stores as tia mentioned before there's the first store is this is a snack shack. So when you first come in, it's that big metal tin um, that you see where it has all the goodies. Uh, the second store you'll be working in is the country store, which is a mini grocery store. So in there we have things like groceries, frozen meat, Nanaimo bars, just like day to day things that group can need or things that they will need. Um, in there, the groups have the option to order from town. Uh, which is they just come in if there's something we don't have that they need. Um, we have the option to go in and get it. Um, there's just day-to-day -day tasks you do in there. Um, it's really great. Um, you have a lot of independence um, because you're working with one other person, but a lot of it is just by yourself sometimes. So it's just figuring out little problem-solving skills, which is really nice. Uh, the other store you work in is the Trading Post, which is like the tuck shop, which you can see in the picture here with the four of us. Um, in there, we have candy, uh, merchandise that people can buy, um, like little bears, hats, stuff like that, um, which is really great. Uh, there's pop and stuff as well. Um, and sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, yeah, so during the week, uh, for one whole week, you'll be in one store, and then you rotate uh, throughout the week. Um, during the week, on Tuesdays and Fridays, you work uh, in the evening. So on Tuesday, you work for badge trading. So when all the groups come in for all the trading while it's happening upstairs, you're open downstairs, and groups can come in and buy their candy and stuff. And then on Friday as well, right before all campfires,
why are all the groups as they walk by um, come in? And yeah, that's basically everything. But Tia, if you want to add anything. No, that was great. Um, Store is a very fun department to work in. Uh, like Ryan said, a lot of problem solving and like working as a team and communicating um, and really engaging with customers because uh, the store tends to be a place that people come and ask questions for because uh, we're easy to find. Um, so we're always like a, a place, a resource for uh, all of our campers. So yeah, you should consider working in store. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. And up next we have Andrea. Okay, so uh, another department in our lovely camp is kitchen. Some people don't know we exist. But we do, and we help prepare meals for our lovely staff. Uh, so our lovely kitchen assistants who help me out in the kitchen help with weekly meal plans. Uh, we try to do fun things like Taco Tuesday that people enjoy all the time, but also switch it up on other days so that it does not get into a routine that can become stagnant. Um, they also help with food preparation, uh, which changes day to day. Uh, it can be anywhere from chopping a billion vegetables to playing with a cake, whatever that day brings. Um, general days, breakfast is at 8, so our kitchen staff have to be in the kitchen at 7 a.m. That gives us an hour to prep things all the way from the bacon to the coffee that our camp puts on. I like that Christopher's face popped in on my screen at the exact moment. Uh, lunch happens at noon at our camp and it's usually run as a drop in, drop out sort of situation. So if our staff need like a 20 minute break to themselves, they can eat and then go off to their cabins, take a quick nap or do that laundry that they forgot to do the night before. Uh, and it's just lets people have a little more time to themselves. And then dinner is at six. So if you're like program staff or things like that, you end around five ish, depending on the day. Uh, and that gives you a little bit of time before dinner. And then we all meet and wear our nice collared greens for dinner and we hang out in the hub. Um, other things our kitchen assistants and myself do are daily tasks like dishes, surface cleaning, just making sure it's a safe and healthy space for all of our people. Um, because it's a working kitchen, so it needs to follow health and safety laws. Um, other super fun things about my kitchen are days like Saturdays, as Isaac and Nathan walked you guys through our Saturdays are a little bit longer, a little bit crazier. So in kitchen, you get early breakfast, but only two of our lovely staff have to wake up that early because if the boats go out at six, we get there at five, things like that. Um, but only two people are required for the early breakfast. It's always crepes on Saturdays, which are made specifically for the people as they come in and out. So it's always a fun, fun morning. Uh, and then Saturday also has two lunches, one at main end, which as they showed you were the, was the area that the boats leave and one at the hub for any of our staff who are uh, on odd jobs or just on day off, if it happens. Uh, so that we have two opportunities for people to eat so that everyone feels fed and happy. Um, and then Sunday dinner is sometimes different too. I mean, Saturday, it all depends. Um, other things we do are we consider people's allergies or dietary restrictions. So if you are vegetarian or lactose intolerant or anything like that, uh, our lovely staff makes sure we make accommodations for you. And even if it's just a dislike like tomatoes, we find workarounds. Um, and like in store, kitchen has uh, days off week to week. If they change, you get to pick your own days off as long as there's no conflicts. But generally with, you know, the four or five of us, if you say, oh, I really want this day off because a family member is coming or because I want to have the same day off as someone else who you're working with, generally people are willing to help you 
make those flexible times. So yeah, kitchen's a pretty fun vibe, as you can tell by those pictures. Uh, we do lots of amazing things there. Feel free to join me. Awesome, thanks, Andrea. And thank you for sharing a dislike of tomatoes. We get it. <laughs> okay, Zaria's sharing about maintenance. <laughs> okay, so uh, obviously we have maintenance at the camp and uh, some, some of our main things to do is beautification of the camp. So that's keeping grass cut, painting buildings, stairs, all that kind of thing, just making it look appealing to everyone so that people want to come back. Uh, we also take care of a lot of the hygiene and cleanliness. So cleaning bathrooms and restocking um, like toilet paper and things like that. Also trying to keep garbage and recycling clean so that there's not piles of garbage and recycling all over the camp. Uh, we also have correspondence with um, the groups that come in and with other staff members about potential hazards. Um, so things that could go wrong with staff's cabins or maybe it's um, tables and things at campsites or the docks will take requests and fix it as soon as the as soon as possible so that everyone stays safe. Um, on Saturdays, as all the program staff are getting all the groups out to sites, we want to make sure that they're running on schedule and not having any issues due to gas or oil problems. So we'll periodically check oil throughout the day and um, we'll make sure that there are full gas tanks on at the LDOC for the staff to take and switch out their empties. Um, evening duties, we do garbage runs on land and lake to um, just make sure that we have, there's no overflows of garbage and trash. We just bring it all to the maintenance yard where it later gets taken out by a dump truck. And days off, every week is you pick your own days off, just like in the kitchen and store. Um, and they're usually chosen chosen on the Saturdays. Um, and we're about to talk about staff recs. And for that, we help with anything you need, building um, stands for trees or for ropes or just anything that can be used <laughs> for the different fun activities. Thanks so much, Zaria. Uh, and then we're going to have Isaac share what it's like to be staff in training. All right. So I was staff in training in 2018, so I know what this is about. Uh, so essentially how this works is that if you are currently 15 years of age, as of this summer, you are eligible to work as staff in training. It's only for that specific age demo. If you're older than that, you'll be working somewhere else at camp. Uh, this amounts to, over the course of your summer, around 400 community service hours. That means that you'll be well ahead of anything that any uh, school will need you for to the point where you'll probably get, I don't know, some sort of accommodation or medal for it from your school. So how it works is that you change your department every week for the most part. Uh, about half of your weeks will be with program, uh, but the other half will be split amongst all of the other groups. Uh, of course, there's uh, store, kitchen, program, and depending on what things we need for program, you might be on ropes, you might be on waterfront, and then there's maintenance. Essentially, what you're doing is you are uh, helping out. That means that whilst you won't be doing the exact same thing as uh, your full paid staff, you will be helping. So if you're on the rappelling cliff, you'll be at the bottom rather than at the top, uh, things like that. It really does help you decide what you want to apply for next year if you want to come back to HSR. There is potentially an IT song if the ITs want to do it, where you sing a fun song, you get to you know, be the talk of the town for that night. Uh, it's genuinely a lot of fun. And then you also help uh, tear down the campfire at the end of it. 
There is also the IT event, which is another one of the staff recs that we talk about, in which the ITs put out a fun event for the rest of the staff. Of course, your days off are assigned to you uh, unless you ask for a specific day. And if you're just genuinely interested in something, just ask and we might be able to swap around what you need. Of course, if you're in staff and training, you'll have your staff and training coordinator who might be me, but we don't really know yet. Essentially, that means that you'll be under pretty much direct supervision uh, over the course of the summer. You'll be in your own uh, separate uh, living situation on IT Hill. Uh, it's honestly a pretty nice place to live. It's a pretty fun job. You get to experience HSR and I would not recommend, I cannot recommend it enough. Awesome, thank you, Isaac. Um, so Andrea and I will be talking about uh, the different staff recs we have. Um, since we live and work together all summer, uh, it's a great time for us to spend um, lots of time together. And we do a lot of that through our staff recs. Uh, we'll be talking about our big ones, um, but there's lots of other smaller ones that we do um, that you'll get to see when you work there. Um, so first one we have is Christmas in July. This is one of our big ones um, where we do Secret Santa and we very much encourage making your own gift for the, the person that you ended up choosing. Uh, it's lots of fun. We do, we go all out for it. We have Santa, uh, we have a tree, we like wrap the presents. Um, it's a great fun evening. So there's two photos to show that because it's so much fun. <laughs> and then we also do themed dinners. Uh, we've had a plethora of um, themed dinners over the over the years. Uh, in this photo, you'll see we did Star Wars. Um, we've done like sushi nights. We've done um, a bunch of other ones. Uh, so we're always taking new ideas. Uh, so if you ever have one um, up at camp, just let us know. Um, we also do water baseball. Uh, so this is a very fun activity where we play uh, baseball in the H dock area. Um, and we wear the PFDs upside down so that we're able to float um, <laughs> while we're like swimming to bases. Um, and it's very fun because people are really bad at it, but it is a fun time and bonds us all together. Um, and then we also have Halloween. Uh, this one is good to think about early on so that you're able to bring a Halloween costume with you of some sort, or you can make it at camp. Both are fantastic options. Um, and there's been lots of great Halloween costumes over the years. Um, so definitely um, have like think about this one because it is fun. Because uh, then we also we wear them during dinner and afterwards. We get lots of great photos. Um, and then if you're in charge of garbage run, uh, so that's when we pick up garbage from sites, you get to wear your fantastic costume out on the water to all of the sites. It's great. <laughs> Andrea. Uh, awesome. Another thing to think about uh, before coming up to our camp is what you might want to wear on a slightly fancier dressed evening. We call that one dinner theater. We get a nice, uh, meal made uh, by senior staff and it's a great day where people show off their cool talents maybe uh it's a dance maybe it's a song maybe it's a really poured out planned rap uh but it's lots of fun and part of the great fun is going down to the h doc and snapping photos with all your friends and uh, honestly it's an amazing amazing night um so yeah, you wear a little a little more dressy, whatever that means to you, and it's a great day. Other great days. We got NASCAR. It happens at the end of the summer. Uh, and since we're a bunch of nerds, we use cardboard and turn them into different NASCAR vehicles, and we run around and play different games. Uh, we also do word scrambles and things like that, just like fun teaser games. Uh, it happens down at main end, and usually dinner is barbecue down at that side for that day. Um, <laughs> next up, uh, around halfway through the summer, uh, we contemplate murder in a fun way. Um, usually Lucas and I have run it for the last couple of years. We've been pretty good at creating a scenario in which someone dies and the staff has to figure out who did it. Uh, again, it's a dress up sort of theme evening. You get to have a character 
who has a name and a backstory, and you all work together to figure out who done it. That's a pretty nice evening. Um, other evenings, we play Crush Pong, which uh, has those lovely red solo cups in a triangle shape and a little happy ball that you try to get into them. Um, you and a teammate play on the team. Usually the teams try to come up with a theme so that you can tell who's on what uh, team. And it's a fun little evening of just silliness in the hub. Um, Frontier Party is our, another one of our super amazing things that we do. And it's usually run by maintenance. So they'll provide little games like horseshoes or the little sacks that you throw into the circles, which has a name, but it's gone. Cornhole. Cornhole. Thank you, maintenance. Um, and uh, it's a pretty fun evening. Usually ends with a swim, just like deck dinners. If they happen in front of our camp, and they're just a fun little day on the evening on the bleacher. You get to have a different meal, a different vibe. You get to be out in this sunshine, have a staff swim, and it's a really nice evening. Awesome. Thanks, Andrea. Um, so living at camp. So you're probably wondering what happens uh, when you apply and you end up getting hired. Um, so living at camp, um, there's various aspects about it. So you live in a cabin. Uh, depending on which cabin you're in, you either have one to three roommates, uh, depending where you are. Um, and that has like your bed, your mattress, dressers, side tables, lamps, et cetera. Um, there's wash houses in each cabin area. So we have a few areas where cabins are. So there's a wash house in there with like our showers, toilets, and laundry. But the laundry machines, this is a great opportunity for you to be responsible for cleaning your own clothes and making sure that you have them because you do need them for work. Um, so those are available. Um, in the hub, this is our dining hall and our kitchen, and also it's our hangout area and where we do staff recs. Um, so this is a very common area where you will find staff and where you'll, you'll spend a lot of time in. Uh, we do have a nurse, so if there's any time you need to see someone about a medical thing, um, there's always a nurse there every week. And then we sometimes have a doctor too, depending on availabilities. Um, so they're a great person to go talk to. Um, maybe you cut yourself, or if you wanna talk about mental health, they are a fantastic resource to talk to. Um, and then if there's any time you need to get a prescription, um, we're able to get you into town um, if you need to like refill something um, or you need to go get like Tylenol or something like that. Um, so Wi-Fi, this is a common question. Uh, we do have internet for um, very important things, like if you need to put uh, your school stuff together, like your schedule or something, um, or other important tasks that you need to get done. However, we don't just have Wi-Fi all over the property. Um, it's a great time at camp to just disconnect from things and then enjoy nature being outside uh, and being with a lot of great people. So we very much encourage that. Um, there's a lot of great phone plans now. So if you do have data or if you need to call home or whatever, you are more than welcome to. Uh, we just ha don't have the Wi-Fi for like streaming and playing games and stuff. But don't worry, it's worth it not to have it. <laughs> Um, on days off, there's plenty of things that you can do on your days off. Um, you can go into town with our van driver if you need to go get something. Maybe you need to get something for your Christmas gift um, or you just need something for your cabin. Uh, you're allowed to explore the properties. We have tons of trails. Um, we have a beautiful lake, so you can en go enjoy all of those. We just recommend you have a buddy with you. Um, your day off is also a great day to do your laundry. Like I said, you are responsible for your uniform and all your own clothes. Uh, you do need those for work. So it was a great day to get that stuff done. Yeah. Chris. All right. Uh, so now we're going to talk about some of the more boring things, uh, specifically the contract. Uh, so the rough start and end date uh, for the summer contracts are June 23rd to August 28th. Um, some of you will notice that that might coincide with your exams. Uh, it's really hard to align a contract start date up with every school district's exams uh, end date. Uh, so we kind of just pick a day uh, and just ask if your exams end after that date. Um, some teachers are really flexible and willing to just kind of bump your uh, exam a little earlier, which is great. That means that your summer starts early uh, and it means that you get to come up and hang with us. Um, 
in terms of your arrival date, uh, we can be flexible. Um, we don't expect everybody to show up on one day. Uh, if you need to come a little early or come a little later, that's completely fine. Just let us know and communicate with us uh, so that we are aware of what's going on. Um, and it's very, very important that uh, any certification that your role requires, uh, you have gotten it before your contract start date. So I'm going to use Waterfront as an example. All Waterfront staff need their NLS, which is the National Lifeguard Certification. Um, you can't really be a lifeguard at camp if you don't have it. So just make sure that you have acquired any certification for your role before the camp is started. Um, the salary. So it is paid biweekly uh, and it's a contract uh, salary. So that means that you are getting paid a flat fee. Um, it's you're not able to we don't track your hours um, the same way that other um, if you worked at McDonald's, they track you minute to minute pretty much. Uh, but we don't do that. We just go um, with a with a flat salary rate, and it's based on a minimum hourly wage of sixteen sixty five. Um, your salary kind of changes depending on what the role is. So roles that require certification, and I'm going to use Waterfront as another example again, um, because they've acquired that certification, um, they'll be getting paid more than um, just like a base rope staff, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Understand. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. Um, okay. So you might have questions about what happens after you get hired. Um, so if you get hired, there's some things that you do need to get done. You will need to get your pleasure craft operator card. Um, it takes about three hours and is about $30, but there's a lot of great sales on them right now. Um, then you'll also have to get your, your standard first aid. Uh, there's lots of places that you're able to get this course done. Um, some of them do mixed in person and online some are just in person so you can find whatever works best for you and your schedule and then we have a mandatory training weekend at woodland trails which is just north of toronto in stoville uh, may 17th to the 19th this is the may long weekend um, but it is very important that you're there uh, it's an orientation for the camp uh, you get to meet everybody else and we go over um, more role expectations um, and lots of area, uh, various things that you need to know to be on staff but it's a very fun weekend as well. Okay, you can switch, Chris. Thank you. And how to apply. So if you haven't applied already, um, you can check out our website uh, to see all the open positions we have available, which are all the ones that we just went over. Uh, and then you can read more about what those jobs entail, um, a bit more detail on there. Um, you can create your and update your, your resume and cover letter you'll have to attach this to the application itself and it has to be in one document. So just put it into one thing, make it a PDF and attach it there. There are resources on our website now um, for how to make a resume or a cover letter. So you can check those out if you're not too sure. Um, you're gonna ask three people to be your references. We prefer it's not your family. Um, try to get someone uh, like a scouter or a teacher um, or someplace that you volunteered at. Um, and get their permission and their contact info because you'll need that for the application. You fill out the application, again, it's all on our website. It's a Google form, so it'll ask you all the questions and you attach everything you need to and you just send it in. And then you wait for an email about setting up an interview and that will those will be happening uh, shortly. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, so we have some alumni uh, here with us and they're gonna share their experiences and some advice that they may have. Uh, so Ainsley, can you start us off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess my kind of general advice to everyone is don't be afraid to try something new, uh, especially my first year working at HSR because I was a staff in training. I was only 15. It was my first time moving away from home and I was a little bit nervous, but I look back very fondly on my experience working at HSR, all the friends I made along the way and how I grew as a person and became more confident and you know, if you asked me back then to come speak at an event like this, I would probably be a little scared, but um, you get lots of great experience and try lots of new things. And so don't be afraid to do something if you're a little scared. And look at you now, Ainsley, you're killing it. <laughs> okay, uh, Nathan. Uh, yeah. You know, you're going to hear a lot of the same stuff when you talk to alumni about HSR, and it's because we all pretty much had a lot of the same experience. We're all very young coming out, you know, and first time being away from home and everything. But uh, 
I was lucky enough to go with a great group of people. I went with six people from back home. So going in, I kind of had, you know, a group of people that I could fall back on, but that didn't stop me. I always made sure to be the, you know, social kid in the room and make sure everybody else was having a great time. And I don't know, just reach out and talk to new people. Don't sit by the same person every day kind of thing. Those are some great tips. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Zoria. Well, um, it taught me a lot about how to work in a team and a lot of leadership skills as well. I use a lot of what I learned in maintenance in my everyday work, working with power tools and all that. And we do a bunch of safety throughout all the camp. So that's always going to follow you everywhere you go. Um, I love all the people that you meet and uh, just being able to try new things. Even if you end up hating it, you should try it anyways, as Ainsley said. Um, and that's one of the tips I would give. Um, anything else? Don't try to create grief with the other staff members because you're all living together and you should just be having fun. It's just a good time. Perfect. Those are all great pieces of advice. Thank you. Um, as you can tell from all our alumni, we love camp so much, so it's definitely a great place to be at. <clears throat> um, so some resources that you may find helpful. We have our website with a ton of information and all of what it's like to be on staff. Um, we also have our Instagram where we're constantly sharing uh, things about camping there and working there. Uh, so you can check that out. Uh, make sure to follow us. And we also have our Facebook, so make sure to like and follow us there as well. Again, we're sharing always great resources, and you can message us anytime on Instagram or Facebook uh, if you have questions about applying. Okay. And then one more, Chris. Perfect. Um, so now we have our Q&A session. So if you have a question, please just uh, raise your hand on the little hand thing, um, or you can ask the question in the chat, and we will uh, do our best to answer it. Um, are visitors allowed? Who would like to answer? I'll do it. Um, so, yep, visitors are allowed. Um, we do have to follow Scouts Canada's policies and procedures. Uh, so if they're planning on staying overnight, that's completely fine. But it does mean that they um, have to go through all of the steps that a normal scouter would have to take uh, to stay overnight. Uh, that does include parents. Um, there are uh, some local like motels. I think there's a resort that's not too far away um, that some parents have stayed at before. And if they're just visiting for the day uh, or they are staying overnight a couple nights and they're just coming in um, during the day to say hi to their kid or so forth, uh, they're more than welcome. Uh, they just got to let us know that they're coming um, for a few reasons. One, we just want to make sure that the kitchen's prepared to feed a couple extra mouths. Um, and also just so that we know that you're on the property and if something were to happen to you on the property, we want to make sure that that they're okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, it doesn't seem like there's any questions. Um, if you want to be typing in something now, that is totally fine. If you think of something later that you wish you asked, you can always um, message us on any of our platforms or you can email us uh, and we'll do our best to answer you. Um, and there's also a ton of resources on our website that may answer some of your questions. Uh, how many job openings are there? Chris, I'll give that back to you again. Alrighty. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I can list a few of them. <laughs> uh, program, there's quite a few, uh, depending on um, what department you're wanting to work in. So um, store, I think there's around four openings. Uh, kitchen around the same. Maintenance is around the same. Uh, program, uh, ropes, I think there's seven or eight, just going off the top of my head. And I believe waterfront was 10. Um, those numbers are kind of rough, rough numbers, rough estimates, uh, as I just don't have it right in front of me. 
Um, and we also have another question about when interviews will start. Uh, hopefully they're starting uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm hoping the beginning of March uh, at the latest. And with the job openings, uh, we do have close to 50 staff um, on our, that are always there, including our nurses. Uh, so it is a big staff team. So there are lots of opportunities um, for you to apply to. If there are any questions, uh, you are welcome to log off and we hope to see your application soon if you haven't submitted it already. And thank you so much for attending. And if our presenters could stay on uh, just after everyone logs off.